Uh, hello, uh, this is the recordproduction.com masterclass uh, tips with uh, Mike Cave uh, at the loft in Liverpool. Um, this instalment we're talking about um, mixed bus processing. We are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, a lot of people ask me, you know, what do you do on, what do you see mixed bus, mm -hmm. how are you actually monitoring what, you, what you're working on? Yeah. Um, I'd say the f I try not to touch the mixed bus for the first chunk of mixing because I find that you can fool you yourself into mm. thinking that you're further ahead with the mix than what you actually are. So I try and keep it completely open um, for at least 50% of the mix. Um, one of the things that I will do quite early on, probably the first thing actually, is just put um, a high pass filter across it at 20 hertz, 25 hertz, 30 hertz maybe, just to lose any muds that we don't need and it's anything that's cancelling out stuff above it. Um, so you could even probably do that from the off, actually, mm. to be honest, because you just don't need to be hearing that stuff stuff down there. Um, the other thing that I do um, from the off is I, I actually monitor uh, what I'm hearing through my record track and back out of the converters and then into my console. Ah, uh, yeah, so you know exactly. So I'm, so I'm hearing the effect of what the converters are going to mm. have on the final mix yeah. from, the, from the start. Um, Especially with some analog desks where you're sort of driving the mix bus, you yeah. can be fooled into hearing something different than what's actually going to yes. take. Yeah. So I tend to um, do that from the start, so I know that I'm listening to what my mix is actually right. going to sound like right. when I printed good, it. Good idea. Um, and then when I actually do start adding some processing to the to the mix, I'll probably start with a bit of EQ usually, um, just to very subtle, you know, one two dB here and there. Uh, if there's anything, if I find that I'm EQing drastically on the mix bus, then I need to take a step back and wonder why that is, and then go back into the mix yeah. and find out what it is that's causing me to do that. So I want to end up with the EQ very subtle at the mm -hmm. end of the mix, and if there's anything drastic in the mix bus EQ, mm -hmm. I need to look backwards and uh, yeah. feedback to why, you know, and solve it in the actual mix, um, and then. Maybe seventy five percent into the mix, I'll start um, adding some sort of limiting or yeah. sort of mock mastering, what I call um, limiting, just to hear what the track's going to sound like when it's mastered, or some idea of it. Because mm. what I don't want is I don't want to finish the mix, send it to mastering, and it comes back with things sounding slightly yeah. different. So I'd just like to hear, um, get a sense of hearing a mastered record back right. towards the right. end of the mix, um, and. Um, I wouldn't say there's any one plugin that I tend to use mm. for that. It depends on the project. I'll probably try a couple of different limiters, mm. uh, maybe some compression. One of the things I've been using a lot of actually lately is the uh, UAD uh, Ampex. Right. Um, it's a two track machine. Yeah. I've uh, been using that on the mix bus, which is up there. The ATR102. Um, that's the one. Um, if you want to try it out, it's one of the first plugins that I'm. I've heard that it's yeah. fooling my ears into thinking we're using tape. It's really, really good. Plus so it, has a, it has a nice interface as well. It, it does. I try not to. <laughs> want it. I, I don't like looking at interfaces. I'd rather just listen to stuff. But yeah, it does. It does look like a tape machine. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of the the harmonic type plugins that I'd I'd be using on on my mix bus lately. Um, and. Sometimes as well, this is more for listening purposes, but um, so that I can send stuff, a listening CD or, mm -hmm. or a listening file to yeah. a client, I want it to sound at least as loud as their rough mix yes. that they sent me. Um, and sometimes that can be stupidly loud, yeah. so I need to do that carefully and make sure that yeah. we're not, you know, doing, mo we're not causing more trouble than we need yeah. to. Um, the Oxford or Sonics Inflator yes. uh, is a good one for that. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a compressor. It's not a limiter. It's a sort of very multi-band compressor. Right. It's right. a bit vague if you read up about yeah. it. It doesn't quite tell you what it's doing, but it just adds a bit of level without any artifacts. Right. Really. So right. that's something that I put at the last part of my chain yeah. after a limiter, just to give it a bit more level. Right. But I won't, I won't be sending that um, for mastering right. like that. But right. that'll yeah. just be for listening yeah. purposes. Yeah. Excellent. So yeah, there's a few, few yeah. little pointers. So, I mean, we were talking before about. Um, Sort of really unusual things to do, and I, I uh, had a, a mix just come through that I ended up putting reverb 
on the mixed bus, which is a one and only uh, one-time event for me, I think. But wow, yeah. uh, I think one of the things is that you know, it's, it, there's nothing wrong with playing around and trying stuff out. So Definitely, especially in the yeah. box, because you know, of course, it's it's very easy to turn um, things on and off. Yeah, funnily enough, I don't. I I did do a mastering session recently where I did. Uh, have a reverb on a send, um, yeah. which is I've done before, but it's not something that I do a lot of. But re re the other week I did something, and it works, you know. But what one thing I think you've got to be careful of with that is taking out any bottom ends because you don't yes. want yeah, you yeah. don't really want reverb floating around yeah. down there. Yeah. Unless you know every every project's different, but I definitely experiment with just taking the yeah. bottom end out if you're gonna yeah, you, rather than actually having it as an insert, yeah. just have it as a send. Mm -hmm. But um, you can maybe do it within the plugin. Yeah, yeah. So. I think I think it was a, a very low um, mix percentage on there. Yeah. But that was a an in the box thing, which is not my normal kind of workflow. But uh, it's certainly Why worth, worth Why playing not? around. As well, yeah. another another thing that I do if, if I'm mixing in the box and I've got a, a master bus is um, just stick some some meters on there. So you know, yeah, you kind of look like the phase and so on. Yeah, you can see what's going on. Um, if you are doing any kind of bounce outs, bounce the disc, or if you're recording out of that, I always, um, when I'm working in Pro Tools, um, uh, turn those those plugins to inactive as well. Cause, um, oh, so you're not printing any any? No, no, no none of the um, none of the, uh, the, the 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 meters are even engaged, and not just bypass mm -hmm. either, because I I think. Um, I, I'm not sure, but I, I think there may be a slight difference between inactive and and uh, bypass yeah, mode. The, so the, the, right click, the could inactive. Well be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, uh, good point. To, yeah, uh, to it's, that's a definite, definite good point because what I find as well is sometimes not not all the time, but now and again I'll get parts that people have actually got the processing on yeah. without realizing. Yeah. Um, and what they've done, there's some. I think Logic is a bit of a culprit for this. Right. I don't use Logic, but. A lot of people who tend to export from Logic sometimes yeah. they don't realise that they're printing their processing. Yes. Yeah. So you get stuff that's just completely mm. smashing the, yeah. the, you know, the, yeah. the levels. But um, it's quite easy just to, before you send parts to anyone in that in, in that example, just just check through them. Yeah. And make sure yeah. what you're sending is what you think you're sending. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So that was tips on mixed bus processing.